This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to take another look at Windows 10 because we have a new build here. This is Windows 10 Technical Preview, available at the end of January 2015. Would you call it a beta? Something like that. It's actually open to the public if you want to try it yourselves, and it's mostly all there. I don't know if I'd use it for a production machine, but anyway, we're going to take a look at the new stuff today, including Cortana, the changes to the user interface, and how it's actually more friendly to non-touch screens, too. We're going to look at it now. So with Windows 8, Microsoft, uh, you could say, went too far too fast, maybe jumping way over to adding the touch UI to everything, even before there were a lot of touch screen devices on the market, that is laptops primarily. Still don't see it so much on desktops. Well, the all-in-ones you do. Anyway, now they're pretty much prevalent, and Microsoft's doing a little bit of a backtrack and making it easier for those of you who really don't like using touch much with your computer to do so. Now, if you like touch, you can still do it. First off, what's really interesting here, we got the start menu, right? But it, it's, it's more like the start menu from Windows 7, but enhanced with the live tiles. By the way, we're running this on the Toshiba Satellite Click 2 Pro, which is a Core i5 Ultrabook 2-in-1 separates. And one of the things that Windows 10 will do, now this depends on the device's firmware too, is in how it's going to instruct Windows, but it can switch into tablet mode with a larger live tile interface automatically when you disconnect it, for example. So far that's working on Surface Pro 3 and not much else in terms of doing it automatically for that kind of continuity handoff between interfaces. Anyway, start menu is right here. Familiar programs that you know, the things you use most often, right here at your fingertips, and you can customize what's here. Say, I'm not really interested in Xbox on this. I can unpin it from start. And if I want to see all apps, say I want the camera app there, I can right click on it and pin it to start. I can also pin it to the taskbar. So it gets moved around and there it is. And if you want to relocate it, you can drag it around, all that sort of thing. So it's pretty easy to use. So these are the live tile apps that are appearing right here, obviously, and they do update and refresh just as they did when it was running in a full screen interface. And if you click on one, just tap on it, it's going to open in a floating window without any border or chromeless windows, as we said. So you can see it looks really modern and pretty cool. No more full screen unless you want it. You can go to full screen, you can go to borderless, you can resize this as much or little as you like. And notice so far I've been using the touchpad. You haven't seen me touching the screen. Of course you can touch the screen too and you can move these things around and that all works great. The, the swiping on the trackpad that drove most of us crazy because it just happened by accident too much of the time to bring in the charms bar and for the multitasking, gone. Yeah, gone. So on the screen, if you swipe in, instead you'll see the notification center, which I have to say reminds me a lot of Mac OS X Yosemite with its notification center that's on the side, only you get to that by clicking at the top. So you've got notifications over here, and you've got some quick settings, too. Like you can see I can get to wireless control, display settings, rotation locks, so all that sort of thing, and you can customize some of these as well. So handy, relevant, I like it a lot, and it's not something that's going to happen by accident when you're using a trackpad, it takes a deliberate swipe. And the charms bar that I think just about nobody liked, well, it's gone. We're back to using control panels and in-app settings. Notice all of these apps have settings now. You tap on the left little three score lines up there, and you can get to settings for any given floating app. And that brings a familiar set of well, settings options that we're used to from the charms bar right there. And control panels looks just like control panels always has. It's in the background here. I'm going to double tap on and here is, oops, made two instances of it. Here it is, control panels. So familiar if you're using Windows 7, that's pretty much like Windows 7. By the way, speaking of Windows 7, anybody who has Windows 7 or Windows 8 gets a free upgrade to Windows 10. So that makes it pretty darn appealing too. So what if you are using a tablet and you want live tiles, you've gotten actually like those, you can hit this maximize button right here and here it is, and these are the tiles that we saw right there. I can add anything I see fit, and we have the left listing instead. And if I click on all apps, it's just going to give me a scrollable list instead of that you drop down to a second set of icons as a grid right there. Works for me. Not bad. And again, anything that you want to pin to the taskbar, you can just pin to start or you can uninstall it. So it's pretty darn easy to use. The taskbar at the bottom, pretty much you know, the same that we've seen on Windows 7 going forward here. The, the same access to your on-screen keyboard pop-up, battery, 
the power plans, your wireless information, audio volume, and this will also right down here bring up notifications. So that's how you do it if you don't have a touch screen to swipe. You just click on that little guy right there and that will also bring up your notifications. Again, not bad. Tapping on the little Windows button down here or hitting the Windows button on your keyboard will take you right back to your fairly familiar desktop. And the icons have changed. I don't know if these are final icons. They're, I hope not. They're kind of a little crude looking right now. I don't know. This is what the icons look like right now. Since the desktop side of things pretty much was always Windows 7, again, this is going to look pretty familiar here. There's no more booting into the live tile interface as a whole big screen thing unless it's set up that way for a particular tablet and firmware to do that. So Windows 7 folks will have an easier time, and even those of you who've been using Windows 8 but spend most of your time in the desktop. Icons are still obviously not particularly huge and touch-friendly here. They haven't done a whole lot to optimize touch on this more desktop kind of UI here. It's more like for things like dragging the windows around. That's pretty easy. You have big title bars right there. And it will, of course, depend on programs as to well they optimize to be touch friendly and also to scale the higher resolution displays. This is a 1080p display on this, so that works pretty well at 13.3 inches. Not much of a problem there. Last interesting thing is Cortana. Notice the search bar is right here. Now, for those of you who just want to look for your application, say I want Windows Journal. You can still type just like you've been doing forever with the start menu of Windows 7, which is a great thing, and then hit the return key, and then there's our Windows journal. You get the same security type notifications, the same installing virtual print drivers that you have seen always on Windows. But a search also becomes, let's just type in... Red Sox. It becomes a universal kind of search that will also search the web. As to whether or not you like that, well, that's up to you. Mac OS 10 Yosemite did the same thing, and really, when I use search on my computer, I'm doing it because I want to search my computer for files, so that's up to you. But anyway, Cortana right here. You can set her up to be always listening. By default, she isn't set up that way. We do have her set up that way. Hey, Cortana, what's the temperature? It's currently 58 and cloudy. Works pretty well. And happily, that's not a very common name, so you're not likely to say it by accident. Now, if you're in a room full of people who are using Windows 10 PCs, you might run into trouble with everybody triggering everybody else. It's pretty sensitive. I had a video playing where somebody said, hey, Cortana. And she actually answered on this computer. Hey, Cortana, who's going to win the Super Bowl? The numbers are currently favoring the Patriots to win the Super Bowl. But my Ouija board app says hops all the way. Hey Cortana, what do you think of Siri? I think it's pretty great that we have Bing in common. <laughs> hey Cortana, how far is it from the Earth to the Moon? Now, interestingly, see, for something that's a little bit more complex like that, she brings up the proper search results, and there's actually the, the information right there, right in the Bing search results. Now, she likes Bing. This is a Microsoft product. And a bunch of web references. So for those of you who are doing research papers or whatever, there's practical stuff besides having fun asking her about the Super Bowl. Like I said, this is a Core i5 here with an SSD. Uh, it's an Ultrabook. It, it's a ULV CPU. It's not a super heavy lifting device. One thing Microsoft has done with Windows 8 as well is, if anything, make it even less demanding than Windows 7 since it's designed to run on a variety of hardware from lowly Intel Atom tablets with slower CPUs all the way up to powerful workstations and gaming machines. So speed is not an issue here. It's very fast. It's very responsive. And I have to say for something that Microsoft isn't even willing to call a beta yet, it's, it's really quite good. It's working very reliably. Now when it comes to drivers and game APIs and all that sort of thing, to make it your daily driver, I'm not sure I would go that far yet, but it's there if you want to try it yourself.